First question is, when was the first time you heard UGK? Oh my God. First time I heard UGK, man. The crazy thing about North Carolina is, it's got a lot of colleges and you go to school and oh, we got a lot of black colleges and a lot of people come from everywhere for our black colleges. Man. And it's this kid from Texas, man. It's all he played. Like, he's like, you can tell where everybody was from in that room. Was you walk by that room, it's just blasting basically where they're from. The DC kids bump Go Go. You know, the New York kids bump J with the Damage and Black Moon and everything. But the Texas kids was Ghetto Boys and UGK. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I heard that was 1994. Do you remember the first UGK song you heard? Man, nope. I just, <laughs> I remember, you know, at, you know, at that time, you remember voices and you remember, you remember just, you know, Bun B's instinctive voice, you know what I'm saying? And and that's, that's what it was, man. But, you know, probably one of my favorite songs, Pocket Full of Stones. Like, it's, 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 it's you know, <laughs> crazy, man, it's just, and it, it's hard to believe it's been that long, too, you know? Um, as a producer, what can you say about Pimp C's impact on hip hop? He has more, he, had, he has more of an impact than people would tend to, to, to know or even think because just the whole section and off. See, the thing about Texas is, Texas is, is a different down south from Atlanta. It's just, it's just totally different sound. Like, you know, Texas rides more than Atlanta. And I think the, the essence of music that rides comes from Pimp C, you know what I mean? Because like just like North Carolina, Texas is a car culture, just like California. You know, it's not a big mass transit system, you know what I mean? Like, everybody like to get out of their cars and ride. And I think the music is indicative of that. And if anything is riding in your car, that's something that sounds like the Pimp C were made. And it just spawned a whole generation of cats to make music like that. You know, it's, North Carolina's like got that car culture and with, you know, whatever UGK puts out, you just put it in your car and put the windows down and ride. And that's the beauty of it. And, you know, especially being here in Houston, you really get to feel it. So that's what I love. And that's why they're always going to be timeless. And what can you say about how Bun B has, you know, managed to transcend a genre that a lot of people get swallowed up in? Man, it's just a, the presence of Bun B speaks volumes, really. Like, he is the real OG, man. Like, you know, some, some rappers, man, some the thing about Bunny is a lot of rappers they they turn old and they turn bitter. You know what I mean? Or, or they turn old and you know I got mine, you got to get yours type of ideal idealism. Or they turn old, they don't even talk to the generation after them. They don't even deal with it. But but B understands in order to real longevity is to pass the torch. You know, it's because you passing the torch, don't mean your light is going out, and that's. That's the thing a lot of cats really don't understand about being an OG in this game. You know what I mean? A lot of cats say uh, original gangster. I say older gods. That's what I say. And Bun B is one of the older gods, man. You know? And it's different between it, for being just an old man and being an elder. When you're an elder, that means you're wise. And you. every time I see Bun B, if you say two or three lines, I'm like, damn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, that's the type. Can, they can last you past your raps, past your records, you know? It's just, that's what type of dude he but, is. But, you know, to be here and, you know, for him to come while I have a show and, you know, he hit me up on Twitter and he was like, perhaps he put on a great performance and it's just like, wow, to have that come from somebody like Bun B, like a legend, you know, he's been in the game, he has longevity, like, I respect him and everything he's done for the culture, that means a lot because, they're just opinion means a lot when it comes from somebody like that. So it's crazy. Real humble, um, real humble down to earth. Too. So it's it a pleasure, man. Dream come true. And how important uh, is UGK to hip hop? Man, uh, they're very instrumental. Um, you know, just to to be a voice for the South, because you know, you know when it was big for the East, Northeast, and then the West Coast, like they. You know, they're part of bringing that, you know, from the Texas and Mississippi and Atlanta. It's like this whole area, you know, that the South has a voice and we have a sound. And, you know, we're not stupid. We make jams. So, like, 
you know, they they have a whole family tree of artists that came under them, like, you know, they're, they're the godfathers, in a sense, so they're very instrumental. And if you had to sum up uh, UGK's legacy? Legendary, man. Like, legendary. I mean, just like the generation before us, the legendary groups was Commodores, Earth, One and Fire, Parliament Funkadelic, the SOS Band, Midnight Star, Atlantic Star, we go on for days, Cameo, Gap Band, our, our, the hip hop's legendary groups, Eric B and Rakim, Gangstar, A Tribe Called Quest, The Dog Pound, EPMD, The Ghetto Boys, UGK. Like you can't say legendary groups from our generation without putting that name in there. Like it's just, it's just Bible, man. If, if, this, if there's a hip hop doctrine, the hip hop Bible, then UGK would have a book in there, pretty much.